Hi, second grade distance learners. In second grade, we have been working on oil pastel giraffes. And if you would like for me to send home some materials for these, let me know and I will send them home. We use kind of some unique paper. I cut some charcoal paper in half and it's nine inches by 26 inches. Then we also use some oil pastels and you could borrow my oil pastels. I have some natural colored oil pastels that I've added a couple other colors to. So if you would like to borrow those things, let me know and I will send home a piece of paper, obviously to keep, and I will send home the oil pastels. So one thing that I always do when we are going to draw something or direct a drawing is say, where would you start? If you looked at this giraffe here, where would you start? And there's no right or wrong place to start. I think some places are easier to start than other places are. But what I do is I look for shapes I can identify. Maybe what can I start with that would help me draw this? So maybe you have an idea that you would start with this hill right down here, or you'd start with this kind of circle nose. I kind of say that Cheesy Bob is hidden in this picture. But um, I am going to start at the top, and I am going to start with this U shape that you see right here. Now you don't want the U to be too small, or your giraffe will end up being really small. I also start the U a couple of fingers down from the top, so that I have room for the hairs on his horns here. Um, so like compared to my hand, look at the size of the U and it can be bigger than this, a little small in this, but you want a pretty good sized U at the top. So I'm going to start with my pencil. Again, I'm gonna leave some room at the top and I'm gonna make a U that kind of goes in the middle of the paper. It's centered in the middle and it's not too small. Look at it in perspective with my hand. Look, look, look my hand, use my hand for perspective. Then the next thing that I kind of see is this hill shape. So this hill shape, notice it's a little wider than the U. It goes beyond the U. So I'm gonna go a little beyond the U and I'm gonna make this U shape. I call this shape right in here the peanut shape. And then you can just go ahead if you see it and make the peanut. But what I also say is remember how we talked about D bellies and C bellies? So I see a long, skinny C belly right here. And I am headed almost for the middle of the page. See how far down this nose goes? And I'm gonna make that C belly going almost towards the middle of the page. Then I'm gonna make a D belly going almost towards the middle of the page. So now I've got my D belly and my C belly, and I am gonna connect those with like a semicircle or a U. And there I've got kind of my peanut shape. So now that I've got kind of my peanut shape going right here, I am gonna go back up here and I'm gonna look at these two shapes. I have like a J, and then a backwards J or kind of an upside down candy cane. It goes up and I make a J and then I go toward the side for that ear. So notice that the J goes below, below the U. Also notice that it's not that close to the top of the peanut. So there's my backwards J and there's my forwards J. So now I've got those two shapes, okay? Now, from kind of the J where it starts to curve, here, where it starts to curve, I'm gonna go ahead and make my face that comes down to the top of the circle. So see here from the J, I don't go all the way to the curve, but just kind of where it starts to curve, see it's gonna curve up, but where it starts to curve up, and I am gonna make go out and make kind of a backwards S shape, but I go out toward the side and then back in towards the nose. So right here, kind of at the base of the gem, I'm gonna go out toward the side, like I'm making a circle, and then come back in towards the nose. And there I have the shape of my giraffe face. So now I've got these two little funny things sticking out here. Those are going to become my ears, but I like to put the eyeballs on 
before I put the ears on. Now you can do eyeballs in a couple of ways. So see how these eyes, I could take them, I'm gonna go below the top of the peanut, my eyes are gonna go in here somewhere, and I could put them so they kind of overlap and I erase this line. So that's what this one did, it overlapped and I erased the line that went through. Now here are a couple when I demonstrated and did them in class. We are starting to finish up in class, which is why I can lend you some oil pastels. So um, with these are the ones that I showed them and I gave them lots of options for how to do the eyes. So see these are eyes, these eyes are fully on the inside. So I said that the eyes should at least be the size of those like cookie quarters, maybe even bigger than your cookie quarters, okay? And I'm gonna make some nice eyes. Now here you get to choose the expression. Notice this guy is looking to the right and how I do that is I take my cookie quarters and inside I put, like I say, like a penny size or a dime size and I put both circles going this way. If I wanted my giraffe looking up, I would put both eyes at the top. If I want them looking down, I put both of my pennies at the bottom. This one here is another one example from another the other class, and I just did the same thing as this one, only I put them on the opposite side. The other thing you can do is just simply put the eyes right in the center, which is what I did with my example. So choose where you would like to put your eyes and decide where you want them looking. They can even be kind of a combination. They can kind of be up and to the side or down and to the side and decide where you want them. Now if you'd like some eyelashes, you can come along and you can put some eyelashes, okay? You don't have to add eyelashes, but if you'd like to add some eyelashes, you can do that. We don't fill these in with our pencils. We fill, we'll fill them in with um, black oil pastel later. So now I feel like I'm ready for my ears because my eyes, my ears should come down somewhere towards my eyes and you can make your ears kind of straight and straight down. I like to make mine a little bit curved. I'm going up and toward the side and then kind of come back down. I'm gonna go up and toward the side and kind of come back down. Not below the eyes, but somewhere in the range where I still have the eyes going here. Then I'm going to add a triangle in the center and that will become, and you can even kind of ridge it if you want to. We looked at some giraffes in class and we kind of saw that they were, they were ridged. Now I'm going to go down to the bottom of my peanut and at the bottom of my peanut I am going to put two ovals and those are going to be my nice big nostrils, not teeny nostrils. Now I can have a couple of expressions. I kind of tended to choose smiles on a couple of them or I can have kind of a straight expression like this one. So you can go straight. I kind of say I don't like unhappy or mad ones but smile, straight expression, or you could have him kind of going, ooh, which would be just like another oval, like with his mouth open, like, oh, what's going on, all right? So you choose which expression would you like. Also, if I'm going too fast for you, please feel free to stop this uh, tutorial at any time. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is coming from the bottom of my circle is my neck. So I'm gonna come, I don't want it you know, too, too teeny. We've got a couple of them that are getting finished. They're really cute and they've got skinny necks. And I don't want my neck to start up here. I need it to start kind of at the side of, almost like this line's coming down of the circle, the cheesy bob circle. I'm gonna go down and then I'm gonna just ever so gently curve down to the corner. And I'm gonna come over here and curve down to the corner. Now you're ready to decide on what kind of pattern you would like to put. We looked again at giraffes. You might want to do that and looked at what they kind of patterns they were. And we saw that they were kind of like uh, rectangles, but they were 
kind of curvy and wavy rectangles. So we had some students who did some kind of curvy and wavy rectangles. Here I did some triangles just coming from the sides. Here I did some triangles coming from the side and in the middle. You could do circles. Okay. Um, I will put a link to my uh, website, DanettePretz.com, and you'll see like one that did kind of uh, almost a stained glass looking if you want to look at some other examples. In class, I had somebody just kind of do some big shapes that looked really nice. But what I tell them that I don't want, be it triangles like this one, I use, see this example here, you don't just want something going down the center like this. If you just do things down the center like this, your giraffe is gonna look like he's wearing buttons, okay? So see, this one would look like they had triangular buttons. You need to also have things that run off the page. Otherwise, it just looks like your giraffe has a shirt on and he is got a button down shirt on. So make sure that some of your things run off the page. So you're pretty much done. And you are now, oh, I forgot one thing. We also put, not on the nose, we don't kind of distinguishes the nose a little bit, but we put some shapes on the side of the face. And if even if you want to put them clear up here, going up the horns, you can do that. Okay, put some patterns there. We will fill these in with oil pastels. Now I like to teach a little bit about shading when I do this. And so what we tried to do is we tried to um, make the sides darker and the inside lighter. And what that does is that helps your giraffe to look rounded if you do something like that and to make the shape look a little bit rounded because light things come forward and dark things go back. So we said that we could choose a couple of colors. And so see how this here that the sides are darker and the inside a little bit lighter and here too. And that just kind of helps that to come forward. So you've got lots of colors here. You've got a really pretty uh, yellow orange. You've got yellow, you've got orange. You've got some natural colors if you want a natural color giraffe. But your giraffe does not have to be natural colored. You can make your giraffe more like a giraffe really isn't this yellow or red or orange, but you could do it something like that. But what I encouraged the students to do is to choose at least two colors and put the darker color on the outside. And also with oil pastels, they're pretty forgiving. And then you can color both sides kind of the darker color. And what I mean by oil pastels being pretty forgiving is that you can like, if you make a mistake, you can kind of go over the top of them. The, my favorite thing about oil pastels is that you can kind of blend them. So whatever color I'm choosing then for my middle color, and I can choose more than um, one color for my middle color, I then would just kind of start and go right over the top of where I was. And that creates kind of a third color there. See how those two colors blend? And so those colors are gonna blend and then I can bring my color to the middle. And it looks almost like I've used three colors when really I have only used two. And because I'm blending this over the top, blending this over the top. Okay, so once you have done the background, so you pretend I'm all finished and I would even go up in here and do the same thing. And same thing over here and kind of then blend this here then I would use either the same colors for the nose or I'd even go a little bit lighter for the nose but you can use even the same colors because this is going to be the lighter colors going to be here so I can take this color again for the nose Okay, one word of warning, and we're gonna use black in a minute, but do not use black until the very last. Black is the very last thing that we use because black really smears. So you um, might want to say black until last. We, I, we do in class, I don't let them do anything with black until the very end because the black smears. So you get the idea, then I could take this and then I really like that center to be light. I can even take 
another color and go over the top of that if I want to, like if I really wanted to make that center light, I could even put a little yellow over the top of that. And that's really gonna kind of make that rounded. I see I could even put a little yellow over the top of here. And that's what I mean by uh, they're forgiving. If you make a mistake, you can kind of color over it and color over it and color over it. Now choose just some colors for your dots. What colors do you want for your dot? You know, you could kind of test colors on the back if you want to, but what colors would you like for your dot? So I might choose something like this, and then maybe something like this, and go over to that, and kind of make these a little darker on the sides. And again, you don't have to. And on the dots, you could just make the dots one color, but you can make those kind of look a little dimensional too, and kind of do that. So you're gonna color your dots after you're gonna choose colors for your dots after you have chosen colors for your background. So you're gonna do background, darker on the sides, lighter in the middle, and then you're gonna kinda do your dots. We have some all different colors. We have some very yellow giraffes in class. We have some very orange giraffes. We have some natural color giraffes. Just kind of all different, people choosing all kinds of different things. So when you're done with your background and your dots, the next thing, the background of your neck and your dots is you're gonna do is the background. Oh, I forgot one thing. So then choose your colors. Once you've done your background, choose your background colors and that's when we're gonna do kind of our little here. Okay. And we can put these in. And then a little bit later, we can even add a little bit of black to that. So now I've got my, my draft pretty well done. I've got my dots all done. And now I am ready for the background. Now I have some blues that you can choose for the background or green, light blue or light green. And with those, those are going to be peeled already. You'll get them and they're peeled. And so what you're gonna do is you're going to take the side and you're going to use it not like a pencil or like we've been using, but you're gonna use the side and you're just gonna go right next to this and you're gonna go up and down, up and down, up and down and color right next to the giraffe. And it'll have a little bit of the peachy color. This is peach colored paper. Have a little bit of that peachy color in the background uh, that you can still see through. And then you'll do the other side and you'll come up here and actually, I probably should have waited for those little hairs. I could have done the first. So, I mean, you get the idea. You'll do the whole background. When you're done with that, the last thing you'll do is your white and black. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the white of the eyes before I do the black. And this is obviously, I should have cleaned this first. This was a dirty oil pastel. Should have cleaned it example of what not to do. So there you go. And do this. So this one had some white and some black on it. Okay, so I'll do the whites of the eyes. And then I will do the black. And I'll tell you why that had black on it. Because we colored black in class. We did the white and they were clean. Now we color black and then we took our white and we just put a little fleck in the center to give the eyes a little bit of fleck. And then we are done with the white. Now, pretend this whole thing has been colored in. What you're going to do then is outline everything. And what that does is it makes all of your lines pop. Um, one thing I should probably mention is with the ears, the ears, when you do the outside, they can be the same color as the background. But if you look at a giraffe and look at the picture, the inside of the ears are dark. And part of the reason they are dark is because they are further back. And again, those light things come forward and dark things go back. If you look at the inside of your ear, you'll see that where your ear, the sound goes in and travels um, inside your ear, that gets very dark. And so you'll want a very dark color in here. So you've got a very dark brown in your set of markers. So you're gonna go ahead and you're just going to outline everything and see how that makes that pop. 
all of your pencil lines, all of your pencil lines should not be seen. All of your pencil lines should be outlined in black. So the outside of the giraffe, um, all of your dots, the head, don't forget that. You can put a couple little more dashes in the in the hairs on the top of the head. Don't forget your U up top. But all of your pencil lines are going to be outlined. Don't forget your peanut. I had a couple kids in class forget to do their peanut. And all of your pencil lines are gonna be outlined and that is going to make your giraffe pop. You're gonna fill in the Cheesy Bob nostrils and the cheesy, and well this isn't Cheesy Bob because he's not smiling, and the mouth and once you have outlined everything, your giraffe will be complete. I love to see finished products, so you can send me a message with your finished giraffe. Again, please let me know if you would like papers or a set of oil pastels, and um, I will be happy to send those home with your work that Mrs. Andrew Chuck sends home. So there you go. Have a great week. Have, bye. Thank you.